I'm Cordell Beard, Senior Pastor. Today, dear Lord, you're the reason why we're able to even come into this building on today, God. So won't you stand up on your feet today and come on and help me praise God on today. Everybody know this. It's set. And I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. And know, and know that is within. That is within. She bless. Bless his holy Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, let's praise his name. Come on, come on, let's bless him. Y'all know that. Come on and sing it. Come on, come on and bless Come on, come on and praise it. Come on, come on and bless One more time. Sing. Come on, come on. Come on, come on and bless Come on and praise it. Come on, come on and bless Come on, come on and bless Come on and praise it. Come on, come on and bless Come on, let's bless him. Why don't you sing that? Come on, come on, come on, and, come on, come on, and, come on come and praise his name. Yeah. Come on, come on, and bless him.
praise him. And when we do, walls come down. Walls come down. Walls come down. When you shout, walls come down. When you see walls, walls come down. When you shout, walls come down. Walls come down. When you shout, when you shout, walls come down. Darkness flee. When you shout, walls come down. Open, open your mouth. Serve a merciful God. For the Lord delights in showing show mercy. For the Lord, for the Lord delights in showing show show mercy. mercy. One more time, Woo. sing the Lord. For the Lord delights in showing mercy. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We bless you on a day. God. We bless we honor your name, Jesus. We honor your name, Jesus. Because you're so worthy of all of the praise. And my grandmother was here. She would say it like this. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all. That is within me. Bless his hope. The name. Can I sing it like that one more time? You see, I grew up in a Baptist church, and they would say it like. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, yes, and all oh, that is within me, bless oh, we're going to bless his heart. I want everybody in this building to lift up your hands and lift up your voice and sing bless.
in the building has that testimony that he has done many great things. So lift that up and say, somebody worship him all over this building amen if you know amen that we serve a wonderful God come on somebody bless him all over this building amen your hands ought to be lifted come on your mouth ought to be open come on somebody bless him in the house amen come on somebody worship him worship your father come on worship your king in this house Worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, worship the lifter up of your head. Come on, somebody, worship. Come on, the lily in the valley. Come on, the bright, the morning star. Come on. Lord, we worship you here. And while we're worshiping, God, give us to be those that worship with the angels. For the angels cry holy on today come on is there anybody at 319 old richston road amen that came in the building with an expectation amen i'm looking for you is there anybody amen that came with an expectation amen you ain't got the high five nobody but just look at somebody if you don't mind and say neighbor come on up i've been through hell and high water i've had trouble on every side but tell them some type of a way tell somebody i still got joy could have been should have been would have been dead a long time ago sleeping in my grave but i'm so glad today that god looked at death and told them to behave i told somebody that i got a testimony and what was your testimony what is it my testimony is come on somebody guess what i was too mean to live but wasn't really ready to die and i'm so happy glad today that he saw the best in me when everybody else around me could only see the worst in me pick me up turn me around place my feet on the solid ground pick me up and put me on a rock to say lift your hands open up your mouth and hear and praise God with the foot of your lips praise him like he's your savior praise him like he's your Lord praise him like he's your healer like he's your redeemer like he's a heart fixer mind regulator a bridge over trouble water slap your lift your hands open up your mouth and say Lord I choose to give him praise somebody shouted put his name in the house let it roll off your lips come on bless him come on praise him come on worship him somebody said if it had not been 
for the Lord that was on my side. They said, tell me, what would I be? Guess what? I'm not like them. I promise you I'm moving. But I'm not like them. Come on, I know what I would be. Y'all ain't gonna talk. If it wasn't for the grace of God that was on our life, guess what? Some of us will be in the jailhouse. Do you hear me? Some of us will be in the crack house. Others of us would have been in the whole house. But you ought to thank God today that you in God's house with your hands lifted, with your mouth open. I decree and I declare that I'm not going to allow a rock to cry out for me but the Bible would declare that let every, 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 everything that got breath praise the Lord you ought to praise him while you got the chance somebody didn't wake up this morning somebody wrote a song that would declare that millions didn't make it but I'm one of the ones that did it and for that, I'll lift my hands. And for that, I'll shout glory. And for that, I'll shout hallelujah. And for that, I'll give him praise. Whisper to somebody and say, neighbor. You don't know what I've been through. Thank God for Mac makeup and good barbers and eyelashes and extensions. Look at somebody and say, I don't look like what I've been through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. So thankful unto God, amen, that you are here. Amen, we've taken that lightly, neither for granted that you chose this place as your place of worship, amen, today. Those of you, amen, that is watching via live stream, amen, we want to welcome you into God's house. Have a wonderful understanding that you can be tuned in right now to any other broadcast, but we take it not lightly, neither for granted, amen, that you have taken this time as a space, amen, to worship with us. Amen. That's not a whole lot of things that I know, but one thing that I do is that God don't make no mistakes. If you're here, you're not here by accident, neither by coincidence, but look at somebody and tell them, I'm here today by divine appointment from the Lord. Amen. Welcome, amen, into this place. At this particular time, we'd like to take the time to give honor where honor is due, custom to whom custom is due, tribute to whom tribute is due, Amen. And with that said, come on, let us put our hands together, the left hand and the right hand. Amen. And just appreciate God for our founder of this wonderful ministry. DP Nation at large. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. For none other than the chief apostle, Apostle Paul L. Beard. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. You can do better than that. Amen. As I always say, amen, we cannot uh, thank God for him without blessing God for her. Amen. In the same manner, let us put our hands together. Amen. For our mother of many nations, the one, the only, the doctor, lovely, elect lady Donna Beard. Come on, y'all, put it in the house one more time. Amen. Thank God for mom and dad Beard being in the house. We love you so much. Amen. Thank God also, amen, for, amen, our very, very, very honorable amen spokesman and speaker today amen y'all put your hands together for our assistant pastor pastor and prophet John Trail L. Hill amen has a word in his belly amen in about 15 minutes I promise you amen that earth is going to touch heaven and the power of God is going to fall like rain look at somebody say my blessing and my miracle is in the osmosis of this atmosphere Look at somebody and say, when you get ready, just go ahead on and pull it down. He's all ready here. Amen. Thank God for Lady Hill. Y'all put your hands together. Amen. The whole Hill family. Amen. Thank God. Amen. For Brother Reggie Chapman. Amen. And company. Amen. Blessing us. Amen. Will grace us. Amen. One more time before the speaker gets up. Thank God. Amen. For my two daughters, McKenna and Matai. Is somewhere around here. Amen. Thank God also for my fantastic fiance. Amen. Come on, do me a favor. 
Amen. And put your hands together. We passionately call her here at DP Nation, Lady J. God, you look good. You look good, lady. Amen. Fellas, if she can't pray, no matter what she look like, she ain't the one. Y'all, they gonna help me. Amen. I just thought I'd help somebody. At this particular time, let us, amen, feast our eyes on the screen for our announcements. Back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back. What's up, family? I am the Young Apostle Core Darrell Beard, and I have some exciting news just for you. Many of you have been joining and supporting us on live stream and I will let you know that I thank you for your undying support. However, we know that there is no place like home, all right? We care about you, your health, and also your safety. There will be sanitation stations set up all around the church. Also, there will be masks in the foyer whenever you come in. You can patronize that if you would like. Listen, I'm so excited about what's going on here at DP Nation Federal. Y'all invite somebody and let them know. Welcome back home. I cannot wait to see you here. Welcome, 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 welcome. to me. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you and your smiling faces here. Amen. Have another announcement, I believe. Amen. There's a lot going on in and around. Amen. DP Nation. So we have a text group, Brother Vaughn Adon. Amen. We have a text group and all you got to do is text Amen. The word DP pedal to 474747. Amen. And we can. Amen. It's a great way Amen. An awesome community so that we can stay connected. Amen. At this particular time, they want to let you know that it is offering time. Amen. You should have been clapping, jumping, turning cartwheels, doing jumping jacks. Amen. It is offering time. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So those, amen, that's giving, there are several ways to give. Amen. It is on the screen. Amen. In the building as well as on live stream amen most of us i believe about 95 percent of us during the pandemic amen have been investing into the kingdom electronically but perhaps there may be somebody here amen wants to give amen your cash in person if that is you amen let me see your hands amen you don't even have to move amen brother lindale on my left your right Amen. Mom, Dad, Beard, their hands are up. Amen. On this side, amen. If you will service them, Minister King, amen. God bless you. Amen. I told God, Prophet Hill, that this was going to be the biggest year for me to invest in the kingdom. Amen. I'm looking to sow, amen, a thousand dollar seed, amen, every first Sunday, amen, and do everything that I can, amen, to make sure that the house of God and the kingdom of God amen is properly flourished amen one of the greatest investments that you can ever make will not be at Sears will not be amen Ruth Chris amen but it is in the kingdom amen of God so we thank you amen for your investments in the kingdom and your heart to give as well as so amen if you would stretch your hand toward your seed Lord we thank you now for every seed that's sown, Lord God, pressed down, shaken together, run it over. You say that shall men give unto our bosoms. Lord, we thank you right now that you are giving it back some ten, some a hundred, some a thousand fold, even in this self same season. In Jesus' mighty name we pray that the church say amen. Look at somebody and say, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Say it like you mean it. Say, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. The praise team is coming and after that, amen, the next voice you would hear would be that of our assistant pastor and prophet, John Trail Hill. Let us receive 
Amen. The praise team. said I was raised in a Baptist church and when I woke up this morning I just felt something in my spirit so I sent it to my mom and she said yeah that's right it's true everything they saying you gotta believe it that Jesus is real it says real real Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I, I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. Jesus is real to me in the morning. He's real, real, real. Jesus is Jesus real to is me. Real to me. Everybody say, oh, oh, yeah. I know he gives, he gives me the victory. So many so people down. Jesus is real. I 
I know he's real because I've tried him by myself and I know that he's real. Come on, when folks left me, when folks talked about me, it was nobody but Jesus. Ah, glory. Nobody, 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 nobody but Jesus. It was Jesus that reached way down and picked me up. It was Jesus that brought me out of darkness into the moment of light. It was Jesus that when I was young and sinner, he died. Oh, he died. He died. Oh, he died. Oh, he died. Jesus is real. Come on and open up your mouth and give God some praise. Check that out, man. Court that out, my time. But old folks used to sing a song and say, "Yes, God is real." I feel the Holy Ghost. He's real to my soul. Yes, God is real. For he has washed and made me whole. Ah, his love for me is just as pure gold. Yes, God is real. For I can feel. Hear me, my soul. Come on and give God some praise in this place. Yes, God is real. Yes, God is real. Yes, God is real. Yes, God is real. Well, I'm not checking that court. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I serve a real God. I serve a real God. I serve a God that never sleeps and never slumbers. I serve a God where I feel the Holy Ghost, where heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. Look at your neighbor and say, I serve a real God. Man, come on and put those hands together. All over this place. I feel something in the atmosphere. Amen. Let's give honor to where honor is due. Come on and put your hands together for the founder and overseers of this great ministry. The chief apostle, Apostle Paul L. Beer and Elect Lady Donna Beer. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, put your hands together for the best senior pastor on this side of heaven. Come on and put your hands together for Apostle Cordero Bear. We certainly thank God, amen, for his lovely fiance. Y'all give it up for Lady J in the house. We thank God for my lovely wife, Lady Quintetria Hill, mom and dad, beard, all of our ministers, male and female. If you're in the house, I thank God for you. Come on and put your hands together for you. Amen. I certainly thank God, amen, for what God is doing. Amen. How many know that God is in a blessing business? Amen. God is in the blessing business. I don't know who that's for. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that, amen, it don't matter what you're going through right now. God is still in the blessing business. I know half of the year is gone, but God is still in the blessing business. Amen. It is not my charge nor my will to hold you long. 
Amen. But I'm going to be coming from the book of John, chapter 20, verse 19 and 29. John, chapter 20, verse 19 and 29. The Bible says, amen, if you have it, shall have it. If you don't, shall wait. Amen, I take it that you have it. The Bible says that on the evening of that first day of the week, when the, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hand inside. That the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, alas, I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side I would not believe a week later his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them and though the doors were locked look at your name and say unlock your doors Jesus came he came through a wall and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Amen. For a few minutes, amen. The young preacher, I mean the big preacher, <laughs> is going to preach a message entitled, My Wounds Are My Witness. My Wounds Are My Witness. Look at your name and say, My Wounds Are My Witness. It don't matter what you've been through. It don't matter your past situation. Come on, it's your wounds. Y'all ain't saying that to me. It's your wounds that have made you who you are. I feel the Holy Ghost. It's your wounds that have authenticated you. I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. As God began to download this message, amen, to me, he showed me, amen, the world. Amen. And not only the world, but the state of the church. Amen. He showed me how, amen, we got caught up on our own high. Amen and our desire to build mega churches but now amen we're living in a dispensation of time amen where there is no mega church all of us got the same amount of people all of us have the same amount of limitations God he put us all on the same playing field because we got so caught up on us and having revivals for us amen until we got about the we forgot about the work of Christ we I feel the Holy Ghost. We were living in a dispensation, a Joshua dispensation. Joshua said, as for me in my house, I'm not worried about nobody else. I'm not worried about the lost that's on the street. But we're living in a dispensation of time where God is raising up a Jesus generation and he's looking for people in the earth that look and act like him. I feel the Holy Ghost. I 
feel God all over me that's not just concerned uh, about me and my house. Y'all ain't saying that to me, uh, but I'm concerned about the world. Uh, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, there's too many people dying uh, without knowing the man Christ. Uh, there's too many people dying uh, and not getting their life right. Uh, I'm not just concerned about me. Uh, I'm not just concerned about my denomination, uh, but Concerned about changing the world. I'm concerned about changing the world. I'm tired of recycling members. One week you in my church and the next week you're in somebody else's church. I'm tired of recycling and you can't get your hair part. So I feel the I feel the Mississippi hardcore prophet coming up on me. I feel God all over me. If you want to be a goat in this hour, you can have that, but I'm looking for the sheep that's lost. I'm looking, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm looking for somebody that's thirsty for righteousness that want to get their life together. This ain't the time to be playing church. God is looking for, Jesus is looking for himself. He came into the world that the world might have life and life more abundantly. He's tired of people walking around with the spirit of condemnation. Y'all ain't saying that to me with the spirit of religion. I feel the Holy Ghost where you think you're too good to share your testimony. I feel the Holy Ghost. He's tired of it. Y'all don't want to talk to me up in here. Amen. And so I was sitting, amen, when I was working at USM, I was sitting in the break room. I got to tell you how this message came about. I was sitting in the break room and I was watching one of the Bible stories on, amen, the apostles, amen, on Netflix. Y'all ain't saying that to me. It, it got so good, Apostle Cordero, that uh, I went over my assigned time that I was supposed to take break. I, and I said, you know what, it's all right, amen, I'm serving God, I'm watching this Bible movie. And, and while I was watching this Bible movie, amen, even though I had read the story of Jesus a million times, amen, it occurred to me that Jesus, amen, though he was the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords, though, amen, he was the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star, though, amen, as a human, he slept in the bottom of the boat and as God he calmed the sea amen though amen he died on the cross and he rose on the third day it occurred to me amen that though God in all of his divinity y'all ain't saying that to me he still had wounds see amen as preachers we always deal especially around amen resurrection time we always deal with the death burial and resurrection but we don't talk about the aftermath we don't talk about amen I feel the Holy Ghost the process I feel the process of healing and that's why we have a whole generation of wounded people y'all are people that's been church hurt because did nobody tell them about the process but they were going to have to go through I feel the Holy did nobody tell them that if you suffer with me you'll reign with me I feel God all over me I feel like pulling my hair right up in this place did nobody tell them the process we deal with the death the death the barrier and the resurrection but nobody deals with the fact that Jesus still had wounds in his hand and wounds in his feet and wounds in his side. What they pierced him in the side and they nailed them in their hands and they nailed them in his feet. But the thing about it is, is that Jesus in all of his divinity, he wasn't ashamed to show his wounds. But guess what? We are ashamed to show ours. We're ashamed to show ours. Jesus was not ashamed to show his wounds in all of his divinity. But we are ashamed to show ours. And we'll get on Facebook and we'll talk about the sinners and what the sinners need to do. 
I, I, this is going to be real today. Now, I don't know if y'all came to play Patty Kate, Patty Kate Baker's man, or Uno, or Monopoly, but I don't play now one of them. And y'all ain't standing to me. I feel the Holy Ghost. It's going to get real today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to scramble some ads and flip some pancakes today. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. We'll get on Facebook. Y'all ain't standing to me talking about what the sinners need to do. What the sinners need to get saved. I feel the Holy Ghost. But let me tell you something about the sinners. The sinners know they're sinners. I feel the Holy Ghost. That, I feel God all of that whoremonger knows she got to go turn some tricks tonight. I feel that drug dealer know he got to go sell some drugs. They don't need you to keep reminding them of who they are. What are you supposed to do? You telling them about how bad sinners and this and that. When was the last time you shared your testimony of how God delivered you? Y'all don't want to deal with me today. I'm about to pass this microphone to the apostle. I feel the Holy Ghost up in this place. When was the last time you shared your testimony? When was the last time you was a witness to somebody to tell them about how God brought you out of darkness into the marvelous life? When was the last time huh? you let God use your mouth to be a mouthpiece for him? When was the last time? You on Facebook telling them what they need to do. What about what you need to do? They'll get saved if you, if you open up and show your wounds. Watch this. I feel the Holy Ghost. Wounds. God revealed this to me. He said wounds don't always kill people. It's the infection that does. What are you infected with that's holding you back from sharing your wounds? Some of us are infected with the self-righteous spirit and a spirit of religion that has suffocated our ministry and our ability to reach the lost. Y'all ain't standing to me. I feel the Holy Ghost. You infected and you infecting everybody else. Y'all ain't standing to me. I feel the Holy Ghost when you should be giving people the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost that's on your life should be so contagious until that's what you're passing off to people but no you passing off your bitterness, your faintness your jealousy, your envy I feel the Holy Ghost it's 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 something more dangerous than COVID-19 and that's the spirit and the infection of self-righteousness but you'll talk about a brother instead of pulling them up but you'll talk about a sister instead of pulling them up self-righteous spirits have killed more people than COVID-19 got your mouth on your brother your mouth on your sister the bible says there is therefore now no condemnation but those of us that are in Christ Jesus now you take that as meaning just for you but baby once I'm in Christ guess what I don't know no condemnation I feel what others see you found I see potential because I got the eyes of Christ I feel the Holy Ghost when others see the truth I messed up I see a message out of your mistake I feel God all out of me somebody lift your hands and show glory you gotta watch out for that infection look at your name and say you got that package you got that package you can't witness to nobody don't nobody want to be around you because you got that package. You got that package. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Why did he say, Receive ye the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Ghost is the only thing that will allow you to be wounded but not bleed out. The Holy Ghost is the only thing 
that would allow Jesus just to get up. I feel the Holy Ghost. He, he wasn't whipped all night long and pierced in his side and, and, and persecuted, amen, just by his own power, amen. But he did it through the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I feel the ho- I feel God all over me. Uh, the Holy Ghost is the only thing that will allow you to be wounded and not bleed out. You can't bleed out. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't going to die. No old folk used to say, the Holy Ghost is a keeper. If you want to be kept, the Holy Ghost, the real Holy Ghost, is not going to allow you to live a lie. Some of us are infected with such a self-righteous spirit that when you got saved, you changed your name legally because you never wanted nobody to find out how bad you was in the street. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost will lead and guide you into all truth. Not your truth. Not the truth that you built up that you want people to see. Not the image that you want people to see. But the Holy Ghost will remind you every time you get pride in your spirit and you feel like you're too good, y'all least had it to me. And you, I feel the Holy Ghost. You feel like your own stuff don't stink. I feel God all over me. The Holy Ghost will remind you that you was once a dirty, filthy rag. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. It was God's grace and mercy. It wasn't by your power. Amen. But you're here. Amen. It's because of God's grace and his mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. The Holy Ghost won't let you live a lie. It'll bring everything back to your remembrance. I feel the Holy Ghost. And you got to understand that people... Amen. The people of the world, they're tired, amen, of seeing hypocrisy. Amen. You acting like you ain't never been nowhere. No, you've been somewhere. You may not want nobody to know the totality of your story, but you've been somewhere. Watch this. If they never, I'm talking about the disciples, if they never saw his wound, they would have never believed he was real. That's why the Bible says, amen, that when Jesus came in, he didn't just come in talking about his name and who he was. He showed for him his wounds. And the Bible said that after they seen his wounds, they were overjoyed. Y'all ain't here. You, the first thing you want to mention to somebody is that you're a minister, you're a preacher, you saved, you sanctified. Let your lifestyle speak for you. I don't know. I, I may not I may not hoop today, amen. I may just have a conversation. Y'all ain't sending to me. But it's time, it's time to be real. Y'all don't want to talk to me up in here. It's time to be real. Amen. He showed him his wounds. He said, Here is my wounds. Your wounds, your wounds validate who you are. Your wounds, what you've been through, validate. Who you are. I don't want nobody trying to speak on a situation and you ain't never been where I've been. What qualifies you? Y'all ain't signing to me to speak on a situation. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here and you ain't never been there. Amen. I, and I'm going to take a left turn here. Amen. What qualifies some people to talk about pastors and you ain't never ran a revival? You ain't never ran a Bible study? You ain't never had I feel the Holy Ghost had to go to the sick and the shut in. I think you ain't never had to bury nobody, marry nobody. What qualifies you? What qualifies you to speak on a situation? My wounds qualified me. I've been there before. I've experienced. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Amen. Because of his wounds, it validated that he was real. I feel the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> he didn't go and he could have came in. Amen. The Bible said that he came. Through. He didn't come through the door. He came through a wall. And yet he still showed him his wound. Some of us get so caught up into the supernatural things because a prophet, amen, said your name. And your social security number, which everybody know because you let folk claim you on their income tax. You get so.
so caught up on the supernatural things. Y'all ain't saying that to me. But you don't allow things to validate the people that you're sowing into. Jesus showed his wounds. He would have been known as the Savior had he not died. I feel the Holy Ghost. He wouldn't have been bruised. I feel the Holy Ghost. He wouldn't have been, amen, if he had not been whipped, if he had not been bruised, he wouldn't have been known as the risen Savior. He had to die. I feel God all over. He had to go through something, amen, to validate what we call him. Now, that's Jesus. And we'll let people that haven't been validated do any and everything over speaking to our lives. I ain't even supposed to be going down that road, but this for somebody. You have to validate. They do background checks. When you get certain jobs, they do background. You need to background check just because, amen, they got a nice little platform on Facebook and a nice, I feel the Holy Ghost and a nice little following. Y'all, they said, does not, what's your lifestyle look like? Because uh, you can be on here talking to me in one minute. Y'all, they said it to me and got the pornographic material in the, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, I feel God all over me. Uh, you can be talking to me one minute ministering to me y'all ain't saying to me huh? and in my inbox in the next minute y'all and now we're in an entanglement I feel God all over me y'all better come get me look at your neighbor and say you better check them you better check them and make sure they real you better check them and make sure they no entanglements. No entanglement. Mm. Watch this. The scripture said that we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. The truth is that some of us are still dealing with our past because you have not shifted yourself from past tense to present tense. And I'm not, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to allow my past to keep me hostage. Jesus has done his part. Now you got to do your part. See, what you don't understand, like I said, the Bible said that we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. See, you're so busy building an image for yourself. Amen. You're so busy building an image for yourself that everybody else sees that you're still dealing with. Y'all, you haven't overcome the struggle that you've been battling because you refuse to bring it to the present tense. It's really what you used to be, but because you don't bring it to the present tense, I feel the Holy Ghost. You still, amen, you still are a victim of your past. Y'all ain't saying that to me and what everybody else think about you, but you got to get out of that. You got to get over people because people, amen, don't have a hell to put you in or heaven to put you in and, and some of the folk that's talking about you ain't got a pot to pee in and a back door to throw up. I feel the heart. You got to learn how to get over people and tell your testimony. I'm not going to be held prisoner to my past. I'm not going to be held. Amen. In abundance to what I used to be. So what I used to be a whoremonger. So what I used to be a drug dealer. The Bible said, let the redeemer of the Lord shine so. So what? You done built your whole future, amen, off of what people think. I don't care about what nobody think. I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't care about what they think. Y'all ain't saying, because I know who holds my future. It's because he lives that I can face tomorrow. I don't care about what you think. Get over people. Look at your neighbor and say, get over people. Some of us refuse to share a testimony because it reveals our nakedness before him. 
we suffer from the Adam and Eve syndrome. The Bible said that they made clothes to hide their nakedness before God. Even though they were created to be naked before God. They let the spirit of condemnation condition them. To, I feel the Holy Ghost. To clothe themselves up. Y'all ain't saying that to me. And, and that's what's wrong with some of us that did. Some of us got what I call the perfume and funk syndrome. The perfume and you know them people that don't really take a bath. But they pick them clothes up and spray some for breeze on them. I feel the and walk out the door because they're trying to mask their odor. I feel the Holy Ghost. And the problem is, is that you're used to masking your odor. But I got news for you. We smell you. Oh, you didn't wash them clothes. You just picked them up and put some Febreze on. And you know you didn't take a bath either. Let's just be real. You went and put some perfume on or cologne and mixed it with that Febreze and the phone. And because you've gotten used to your smell, you think you smell good. But everybody else around you wondering what in the world. Y'all don't want to talk to me. You think you look good doing your two-step shop. You think you look good coming here looking like you got everything together. But we, the real people, see you. We see that you're struggling. We see that you're toe up from the floor. Up. It's time to be real. We see, we see, you can't even worship good because you're too busy trying to cover up. Y'all ain't saying, you can't, you know if you must think y'all, you don't want to lift your hands. I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about? If you got a little older on you, you, now some of us are wise enough to sit still. Some of us just like to go on and move around. <laughs> y'all ain't talking to me. You know what I'm talking about? You can't even get a pure worship in because it's fake. The worship leader has to fight the atmosphere because you got something that's fake when the Bible calls us to worship in spirit and in truth. Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, pull your mask off. Pull your mask off. It's time to show your wounds. Pull your mask off. It takes more work to cover up than it is just to let it be what it is. Y'all, it is what it is. Y'all ain't said that. It takes more work to cover up something. Especially as they got them big old skeletons in the club. Ain't no small person. It takes a couple of uh, uh, shirts to, to make me one. Y'all ain't said nothing to me. Look at your neighbor and say, take off your man. It's time to have real worship. Get back to real worship. The Bible says, as the Father have sent me, watch this, and I'm almost through, I am sending you. Jesus said to Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe. Bless those who have not yet, amen, who have not, who have not, uh, who have not believed because, amen, I'm sorry, I messed up my words. Amen. He said, as the Father have sent me, amen, I am sending you. He told Thomas, amen, he said, you believe because you have seen. Bless those who believe and have not seen. Because the truth of the matter is, is that some people, amen, people may not ever see Jesus, but they're going to see you. You are the only Jesus, amen, that some people will ever see. And that's why you have to be willing, amen, to show your wounds. This ain't a time, amen, for you to be embarrassed about, amen, what God has brought you from. Amen, if you're healed from it, look at your neighbor and say, be healed. 
be healed don't I feel the Holy Ghost don't be held down be healed I feel the Holy Ghost don't you know that there's people that's looking at you I feel God all over me and when they see amen the deliverance that God has brought you through it motivates them I feel the Holy Ghost to come to where you are I feel God all over me look at your neighbor and say my wounds it are my witness Watch this. I'm going to this scripture, and then I'm going to close, yeah? I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to. Watch this. John chapter 5, verse 5 through 11 says, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lying, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. Look at your neighbor and say, He ain't asked you all that. He just asked, did you want to be healed? Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy, up his bed and walk. And on the same day was the Sabbath. And the Jews therefore said unto him, amen, that was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them and he said that, he, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. I want you to watch this. This is about to bring it home. Jesus healed the man of his infirmity. The Bible says that the man carried the thing, amen, that he laid on the thing for 38 years. And after his healing, because you got folk like this, somebody saw him and said that it was unlawful to carry the thing that he was once laying on. And he said, amen, and that's what I want you to watch out for, the spirit of religion, because the spirit of religion will have you laying on something that you're supposed to be carrying. His wounds became his witness. The reason why they recognized the man is because he was carrying the thing that he was laying on. And that's why in this season, if you're going to be effective, don't worry about what people got to say because the spirit of religion had said that his healing uh, was unlawful. Y'all ain't saying that to me. And you're going to have religious folk to say, I remember what you used to do. I remember what you used to say. And it's unlawful for you to have a microphone. It's unlawful for you to have a business. Uh, and you file for bankruptcy it's a long for, for you to be a mentor to girls and you used to be a prostitute it's a long for, but what you got to do is put your hand on your hip and let your backbone slip and look the devil in the eye and say devil you are a liar my wounds are my witness y'all ain't saying to me somebody ought to open up your mouth and say come what may my wounds will be my witness I feel the Holy Ghost if I tell my testimony I've been abused I've been ostracized I've been talked about I've been lied on but I feel God all over me my wounds my trials my tribulation has brought me to this platform that's why I'm qualified to be in this place, in this position, and in this time. I don't care what nobody says about my past because I know that if I suffer with him, I'm going to reign. I feel the Holy Ghost. I know that if God be for me, he's mine. 
He's mine. He's mine. That go out against me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. My wounds are my witness. I'm going to be an effective witness. I'm going to be an effective witness. I'm going to tell the world how good God has been to me. He's opened with us. He's made ways out of no ways. He's been a mother when I was motherless. He's been a father in my fatherless situation. You can't tell it like I can. What the Lord has done for me. Open up your mouth and shout. Uh-huh. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ought to testify. You ought to tell somebody how good God's been to you. I feel the Holy Ghost. It was a soul writer that said, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the rat like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I said, but now I'm found. But now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see through many dangers. Charges says, I'm already, already, already come. It was his grace that killed me. It's his grace that's going to lead me home. Open up your mouth and shout. My wounds, my wounds, my wounds. Every night that I had to cry, every tear that I had to share, every night that I was sick, when I couldn't see my way out, is a witness. That's why in this season, I'm not looking for a spotlight. They can have the spotlight, but I came to light up the spot. I came to tell somebody how good God has been. Open up your mouth and shout it this way. Look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, and say, neighbor, don't be ashamed of where God has brought you from, because the truth is, I don't look like what I've been through, but I look like who brought me through. I wish I had somebody, anybody, to have a flashback over your life and see what God has brought you from. Lift your hands, open up your mouth, and say, Lord, I thank you for bringing me this far. were trying to hide the fact that they had COVID. The devil is a liar. Guess what? I had it and I conquered it. Y'all, I feel the Holy Ghost. See, that's real faith right there. Real faith ain't denying I feel the Holy Ghost. Real faith calls you to come into conflict. I feel up Somebody open up your mouth and shout.
I want y'all to zoom in real good because I got to tell the folk what real faith is. Real faith is not running or denying. Y'all excited to me. But real faith is coming into contact with something huh, and conquering it huh, because at the end of the day, huh, the Bible would declare huh, that I am more huh, than a conqueror. Huh, you're looking at a miracle. Huh, look at your neighbor huh, and say, neighbor, huh, it may not look like it, huh, but you're looking at a miracle. Huh, I could have been shut up what about that sleeping in my grave ah, by God by God by God by God may not that behave I got a right and I got a reason that feel God to lift my hands open up my mouth and shout Maybe, 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 maybe COVID-19 ain't your testimony. Maybe depression was your testimony. I double dog dag it to look at somebody and say conquered it. Maybe, maybe. Maybe depression wasn't your testimony. Somebody almost lost your mind. Look at your neighbor and say, conquer it. Maybe, maybe, maybe you almost killed yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, I conquered it. I conquered it. I, I conquered it. I conquered it. Come on. I conquered that thing. I conquered that thing. I feel the Holy Ghost. I conquered that loss. I feel the Holy Ghost. They left me for dead. They thought that I was going to die in my sin. But my wounds is my witness. Open up your mouth and show glory. Get your neighbor. Go ahead and turn the lights on. I feel deliverance in this house. Woo. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I had low self-esteem. But guess what? Look at somebody and say, I conquered it. I conquered it. I conquered it. I conquered it. My wounds is my witness. My wounds is my witness. Yeah, they talked about me. Yeah, feel the Holy Ghost. But my wounds is my witness. Open up your mouth and shout. I've been looked over. I've been criticized. But it could not kill me. It could not kill my ministry. Because you can't kill what God has commanded to live. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to live and not die. I feel God. My wound. Prophet here, what qualifies you to scream like you scream? Because that was a time when I didn't have a voice. That was a time when people robbed me of my voice. That was a time when I was abused spiritually, physically, and mentally. But look at your neighbor and say, he conquered it. He conquered it. 
feel God. He conquered it. He conquered it. That's what qualifies me to lift my hands, to open up my mouth, and to shout with a voice of triumph. That's what qualifies me to not wait till the battle is over, but I can shout right now. Shout right now. Lift your hands. My wounds a wonderful change has come over me Minister Keisha can you help me out with that my wounds my witness. It's a real hour now. A real hour. Woo, I feel that thing. I feel that. I like that chord right there. Woo. My wounds, my wounds 
on my witness. You don't have to live in a dark place, in a dark situation. There is light and it's available to you right now. So if you desire to be saved, I'm telling you, I want you to hit that inbox right now. If the Lord is pulling on your heart today, a wonderful change. Sometimes even those of us that are saved still need a retouch, a refresh, a wonderful change. We're here to offer that to you today. I want you to hit that inbox. Amen. We have ministers, amen, that are available. Amen. That's going to get with you and pray with you and for you. Lift your hands. Right here, Sister Brittany. I see. Well, for, for the first part of this year, you've been in a real dark place where depression has wanted to take you out God said this is where you're supposed to be this right here is giving you life and virtue there have been times when you've been so broke down until you just didn't feel like moving some days where you just didn't feel like going the virtue has left but God said, get back connected. God said, there's virtue here. I feel the Holy Ghost. This is a well where you can drink and thirst no more. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the void even that's in your heart. God said, he's getting ready to feel that. God said, all you got to do is stay connected. And he's going to feel that void in this season. God said, run after your purpose. Run after, he said, you, there are certain things, amen, I see that you put on hold because of the loss of your father. God said, go after it in this season. God said, don't let this year pass you up without pursuing and executing. That is the word of the Lord for you. I feel the Holy Ghost. A wonderful change. Oh. And God put you in my spirit. And I saw a major door opening for you in the month of October. Apostle Cora said he received it too. <laughs> I saw a major door opening for you in the month of October. And you will know it when they get here. I just want you to know my cash app is Fat Preacher 26. I ain't gonna even say no more. A major door is gonna open up because your wounds 
is your witness. It's your wounds and what you've been through that have qualified you to be on this stage. I see people that have tried to talk about this, what's happening, this kingdom fame that's happening, but your wound qualifies you. And that's why this is your season, this is your time, and this is your platform. Come on, somebody ought to bless God with her. I feel that somebody ought to rejoice your wounds every night that you had to cry, every tear that you had to shed, being the strength of other people. God said your wounds. Woo. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Oh. Your wounds, your wounds, your wounds, your wounds is what got you your job anyway. I feel the Holy Ghost, you were unqualified according to man's standard, but your wounds became your witness. God said, keep on being a witness. Come on. He's about to elevate you to places. I feel, I see board room. I see conference rooms. I feel the Holy Ghost. Your wounds. I feel, I feel God in this place. God is in the restoring business. God is in the restoring business. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I speak peace. I speak favor. I don't know. There it is. That is, that is, that is. Come on, I take that chip off of your shoulder. Sister Sharon, I see break, breakthrough. Breakthrough. Just lift your hands. I see breakthrough coming to you. God said, quit fast in a hurry. It's going to hit you like a mighty rushing wind. I'm telling you, as sure as I'm a prophet of the Lord, God said, breakthrough is coming to your house. Every seed that you have sown, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to rejoice with her right now. I feel the Holy Ghost breakthrough. It's been feeling like you can't break through. It's been feeling like you can't win for losing. I see you crying out two nights ago. I feel God all over me. I feel the Holy Ghost. But God said in this moment right now, he was freeing you. You're free. 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 Receive it in Jesus' name. Oh, wonder. God said, this is your season of full potential. I see the word maximum potential. See, you've been operating in one atmosphere, in one area. Amen. It's been pretty much music. But God said, it's preaching time for you. God said, he's about to have you operating on all four cylinders in this season all four cylinders I see all four cylinders I see maximum potential God said in this season you won't lack you won't lack your family won't lack I feel the Holy Ghost these next six months is about to be the blessed the most blessed six months y'all have ever experienced if I not be a prophet of the Lord I'm telling you by January of 2021 your whole financial situation is going to change. I speak it right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to shout. Ah! A wonderful change. A wonderful change has 
come over me. Come on and put your hands together all over this building. Those of you that want to sow into this ministry, I encourage you to do it now. This is good ground. This is good ground. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is good ground. I encourage you to sow now. Amen. It's been an honor and a privilege to, amen, be before you today. Amen. At this time, amen, I'm going to let Lady J come and close us out. Amen. Please join us on Tuesday nights. Amen. Live Bible study. Amen. At 7 p.m. God is doing it, and he's doing it right now. Amen. Amen. Can we give God some praise for the word of God? Hallelujah. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet, and I want you to just release a praise for what has been spoken over your life on today. Hallelujah. Whether it was an individual word or a corporate word, God spoke to you. Come on, everybody, release a shout right there unto the most high God. Hallelujah. Yes, God, we thank you. We thank you for the wounds. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that we had to go through to bring us to this point. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, can we give God praise for the man of God? Assistant Pastor, Prophet, Jung Trail Hill. Amen. I want everybody to just take a moment. I want you to begin to pray for him. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Hallelujah. Come on, let us hear you praying. Father, we tell you thank you so much for the man of God. We decree the word of God over him that no weapon that is formed against him would ever be able to prosper. We tell you thank you right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that his best days begin today. We tell you thank you that he is under an open heaven. We come against the spirits of backlash, retaliation, and sabotage in the name of Jesus. And we tell you thank you that he's covered under the blood. Hallelujah. Physically, spiritually, and emotionally, he is covered under the blood of Jesus. His family is covered under the blood. And we tell you thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for everything that he poured out we pray that you would pour it back into him without measure and it is in the name of Jesus that we pray now come on everybody give God praise for the best assistant pastor on the planet hallelujah and y'all clap for yourselves because you made the decision to be in the house today DP Nation pedal we thank God so much amen we're gonna take an opportunity to sow do we have people that are sowing are we sowing today amen sister Karina's coming over here if you want to swipe Amen. Let me tell y'all, can I testify? Can I testify? Can I, he said our wounds are our witness, right? I remember a time where I had to figure out if I was going to get kicked out of where I was living at or not. Hallelujah. But guess what? That ain't my testimony no more. I, I testified during prayer one time. I woke up with thousands in my account one morning. Come on, somebody. Y'all don't get mad because if God's blessing your neighbor, that means he's in your neighborhood. Amen. So, so what we have to do during this time, like no other, the Bible says during the famine is when Isaac sowed and God blessed him. And so what I want everybody to do is grab a seed that you in your hand. Are we walking around to them? We're going to them. Amen. Amen. And Sister Karina is still here. And let us pray over those that are sowing. Father, we want to tell you thank you for those that are making the right decision to sow in this moment and in this atmosphere. Lord God, I decree over every sower, Deuteronomy 1 and 11, that you would bless them a thousand times more. I thank you, Lord God, for every seed sower, that they are completely out of debt. All of their needs are met, and they have much more to put in store in Jesus' name. And we say thank you. Amen. Come on, y'all. Clap your hands for giving. We have some people that are raising their hands. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to go home? Come on, let's stand up. We're getting ready to go after such a powerful word from the man of God. Y'all help me give uh, God praise for the best looking man on the planet, Apostle Cordero D. Beard. Amen. Amen. We thank God so much for him. We honor and salute him because y'all know he's always somewhere working. Amen. Amen. Y'all lift your hands. And y'all know I'm going to do it the easy way. We do have... Oh, praise the Lord. I ain't learned it yet. Y'all ain't been around here long enough to learn it all. Praise God. Amen. Look at somebody point at them and say, we do have dominion and power. Come on, point to everybody around you. Say, we do have dominion and power in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Amen. Love y'all.